Hello, welcome to the MMA Freak Cast. This is the relaunch of MMA Freak Radio for MMAFreak.com. My name is Matthew Salzer. I'm the senior editor for the site. And with me is my co-host, Edson Valenzuela. That was awesome, Matt. Thank yes, you very thank much. You. you are welcome. Okay. So, we are here to talk about recent events in MMA. Uh, upcoming, currently, and... Uh, the first one that's coming up right now is uh, the most, let's see, the, um, what I'd say is probably the most recent event has to be actually ongoing, which is UFC Fight Week. So, um, International Fight Week? Yes, inter UFC International Fight Week, yes, that's the full name of it. And uh, it's the second year of it ongoing, it's the second year? Two years going now. Yes, second year to the years going and typically it has lots of competitions in various combat sports you got so so let's say i'm a third watch just just as a theater of the mind sort of situation let's say i'm a 13 year old boy who's an enthusiast of mma but i i'm not completely and totally well informed yet as to what international fight week is how would you describe it to him international fight week is a week of just various competitions in various disciplines you got various grappling you got olympic wrestling you got jiu-jitsu a few different jiu-jitsu tournaments you've got amateur kickboxing amateur karate just amateur i i can't remember if taekwondo is in there or not but just stuff like that and then you also have the, the amateur world mixed martial arts championships through the uh international mma federation that's also exciting it's the second year it's going on and all of the combat sports have also different divisions for each sport like different sorry weight divisions let's say yeah it's very yeah different weight divisions i think it just depending on the competition might be various age groups i don't think there is really an age group for uh the uh amateur mma but yeah the various competitions they're gonna have age groups they're gonna have weight classes they're gonna have all that and um one of the uh something that's actually new that happened this year um is that thursday so yesterday we had Invicta FC 13, and uh, the main draw there was Christian uh, Justino, mm -hmm. aka Cyborg, going up against Faith Van Duin, and she smashed her in the first round. Not surprising. <laughs> but... So so Cyborg was the defending champion. This was Invicta's main event, right? Yes, featherweight. And, uh, yeah, she just went in there and just ruined Faith Van Duen as she does <laughs> most of her opponents. She just goes in there and smashes them. I wasn't able to catch it. Were you able to watch it? I actually wasn't able to either. I do not have UFC Fight Pass, so uh, I'm, I'm going to have to work on that. But, yeah, she just, you know, we, we all know what she does. <laughs> she goes in there and she beats him up. That's just, you know, pure and simple. And um, this is supposed supposedly this is going to be the last her last fight before she goes, tries to make a cut to bantamweight. Which was the agreement that Dana White had proposed to her that if she can make a bantamweight. So, okay, you explained it to me as Dana White had sort of made a proposal. If you can make bantamweight, you can fight in the UFC now. Does this mean if you can make bantamweight, you have to fight one fight against, uh, like a tune-up fight at bantamweight before we're going to put you up against Rousey? Or is it, you can weigh in, we'll put you right up against Rousey? It, it's the uh, former. So okay, she, okay, yeah, okay. she has to she has to make one. She has to prove that she can do it. Then and it's gonna be an Invicta. She does that. I believe she gets an immediate title shot against Rousey. And then we get to see who's really the top woman in the world, whether it's Rousey or Cyborg. Now, um, which to me that completely depends on who gets their discipline in first. It depends on what to me. It depends on if Rousey can actually get a submission in first or if a cyborg can you know, land smash a punch. Her, yeah, smash her face in first. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's so. Um, and that, of course, is assuming that um, Rousey defends her title successfully next month against Beth Correa, mm -hmm. but that should not. That shouldn't be a problem because mm -hmm. she's an underdog. But then again, in May, anything can happen. Anything so, can Yeah, we've, we've seen that in the past uh, few. Uh, we've seen that if in the Matt, first Sarah, half it, it, of 20, it, 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 you know, we've seen that in the first half of the year when we saw, 
you know, Anthony Pettis lose to Rafael Dos Anjos. The, uh, you know, last month we saw yeah. Kane Velasquez get upset by Fabricio Werdum. I think that had partially to do with altitude, but um, regardless. And then um, we, we've seen Yota Machida lose, like, twice in yes. dominating fashion. Yeah, and pretty so, badly. Yeah, that's, it's UFC anything. And no, it's MMA. Anything can happen. Well, oh, and very quickly, just to clarify one thing. The UFC does have a working relationship with Invicta, but uh, Invicta by no way is owned by Zufa. Am I correct? That is correct. Okay. UFC, uh, uh, yeah, the Invicta and UFC are have this deal where they broadcast the fence on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, they actually have that with several other different promotions, too. Titan FC is the most recent acquisition. I think Shuto Brazil also has events. Invicta, though, being sort of a premier women's organization. Yeah, it's the premier women's organization. You're going to have women in Invicta that you're just not going to have in the UFC just based on the weight class. Like, Adam Waits, uh, you know, you can sign maybe one or two women, but the fact of the matter is, if you're a woman and you're walking at 105, there's no way you can fight at mm-hmm. one, you know, uh, up at Strawway at 115. That's just not going to happen. Speaking so, of Adam Waite, was that one of the main events? Was there one before that? Yes, there, um, there was the Bantamweight event for the, um, not the inaugural uh championship but uh tanya evinger beat irene aldana and then um ayaka hamasaki um took uh, out herika tiburcio in the decision uh tiburcio was the one who defeated the karate hottie michelle watterson and uh this is actually the uh this is actually the second fight in which uh the belt changed hands Second, second fight in a row that the belt changes hands. Yes, at at Adam Weight. That's just that. I guess that's just how close it is. You know, uh, Michelle Waterson defended it once, and then, um, uh, you know, um, to, and then, uh, Herica in her in her flyweight debut, in her Adam Weight debut, mind you, mm-hmm. um, defeated. And this was her moving Waterson. down. Her yeah. moving down. Yeah, yeah. T- that was that was Herica Traversio in her fl- in her Adam Weight debut. She went down defeated Watterson, and then Ayaka Hamasaki just came in and took out um, Tiburcio. Okay. So it's, oh, it's just, yeah, and, and like I said, this is just one, this is one of those weight classes where you're just not going to see a whole bunch of the women in the UFC. Um, you could possibly see someone from from uh, the flyweight division i'd imagine that barb honchak may get in there i don't know when she's gonna fight again and i feel or rather i pulled up here um just a really quick quote from cyborg after her fight and i'm imagining that this was in rough english if i remember correctly uh yeah she's got word doesn't have the she, best she's got it. a broken accent yeah uh so it's this is the quote after her win against van duen Quote, let's go train hard. Make 135, 140. Fight, Ronda Rousey. Stop, run, she proclaimed. Now, what, <laughs> give me a second. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to, let me, let me, one more time. Are you ready? Okay. Just to see if we could decipher this. Okay. Between the two of us. Okay. <clears throat> we'll do it, we'll, we'll do it one phrase at a time. Let's go train hard. So is that, she's inviting, uh, you think she's inviting? Uh, she's definitely inviting Ronda to go train hard. For a, their match with each other. Yes. Which would be a very intimate training situation for two uh, opponents. I don't think she's mean together. I mean, she's just in. Make 135. Uh, that's, I, I imagine she's saying that she'll make 135 probably. And what, what, why does she follow that immediately with 140? Fight Ronda Rousey. Stop run. I guess she was saying, don't be afraid to fight at a catchway and stop running. Because people have been saying that Ronda's been running away from Cyborg, which I don't think it's running when you want your opponent to make your weight class. I don't think no, that's... No, it's not. I, I, um, I agree with your assessment. Yeah, ju- um, one thing of note is the fact that... And w- hold on, one last thing. But when pre- uh, and this is from the Yahoo article. I'm sorry that I got this from. But when pressed, if she could, and, or if she wouldn't, could make, I'm sorry, 135 pounds in her next fight, Cyborg hesitated, saying, "I don't know." That was, that was the last quote. Yeah, that, she was kind of hesitant when I, you know, I went to uh, the Invicta 11 mm-hmm. in Los Angeles, and she was, you know, very hesitant uh, when she was talking about that. It, 
the post fight press conference, and I remember every single reporter was just asking her the same thing, hashed up over and over and over again. And you can tell towards the end of the conference, she was getting frustrated at the fact that they're basically asking her the same thing over and over and over again. And she's basically giving the same answer over and over and over again. And this is indicative of the fact that there is no more interesting fight in women's MMA to make. So, I mean, I could understand how maybe uh, she well, would be annoyed by hearing that over and over yeah, again, but she unless, should be flattered as well. Yeah, unless you unless you can um, match up Holly Holmes, but... Um, is, that know, a, she, is that a fight that has happened with either of them yet? Because that takes away some of the luster. Um, you know, uh, Holly Holmes just... Well, she hasn't... She's, she's still new to the division. She's got to fight some more people in order to actually build up some more credibility. And my lack of MMA knowledge is showing right now, by the way, that yeah. I don't know that myself. I yes. apologize. Yeah. Well, it's not. Well, she's kind of been on the minor circuit for a while. Oh, she's okay. only had one fight in the UFC against Raquel Pennington. Okay. And, uh, I, you know, d despite the number of opponents that she's faced, Raquel Pennington is in. in you know, she, uh, honestly, her record isn't all that spectacular because she's. she's got a little bit over a 500 record if there if there is a but uh, if there is a division in mma or a group of divisions in mma where a, a no uh, where sort of an upstart can make a splash though i would say it's women's mma simply from the, simply based off of the fact that the talent pool is more limited at that moment at least eventually more and more people will start uh, more and more uh, women will start uh, flocking to the sport to attempt a career, but as of right now, really, there's there's not really that much talent, uh, right? Aside from somebody who's like a career athlete like Ronda Rousey. Yeah, I, I'd agree. I, I disagree with you in terms of bantam weight because I do think that enough women, there are enough veterans up there, enough women up there. Uh, you know, Kat Zingano, Misha Tate, Jessica and Draw. Uh, you know, um, you know, just just a bunch of women up in that uh, weight class that I think are. Uh, established enough that they could be considered veterans, and I don't think that there's going to be a whole bunch of talent. I mean, you could see someone pop out of nowhere. You know, we, we've always seen people pop out of nowhere f or throughout the history of MMA, but in terms of um, in terms of there not being a lot of talent, I, at bantamweight, I don't think that's the case. Now, in terms of of straw weight, I agree with you that's the case. You know, we see jo saw jo Joanna... Uh, Je, uh, je, I can't even pronounce her name, but um, you know, we we saw we saw. Let jo me see it. We saw Joanna, <laughs> the 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 strawweight champion. Um, go on. You know, go up. Actually, no, I don't think she went. Up. Uh, you know, we saw her come into, um, and go up against Carla Esparza and just destroy her. It was not even close. That fart fight was honestly hard to watch just because of the fact that not not because the fact that I'm a wrestler and I cheer for the wrestlers. It was the fact that Carla was just getting so handled and just beat up that it was just hard to watch. It was hard to see her just get destroyed like that. I think that it was a merciful stoppage. <laughs> so <laughs> but I I agree with you. There I don't think there's a whole lot of established veterans up uh, at Strawweight. Uh Felice Harry, you know, she she's honestly, you know, you, uh blacking in and out of the top 10 rankings. Carlos Sparza definitely. Um, Jessica Aguilar, she just got signed, you know, that could definitely be the uh, possibility there, but there's not a whole lot of veterans there, because most of the veterans, they're floating up, um, you know, at about 125, 135, uh, and Angela Magania could probably call her, uh, yeah, she is a veteran too, but, um, at Strawway, I, I agree with you, there's not a whole lot of, there's not a whole lot of established talent, you know, everyone's pretty recent, pretty new, pretty recent. Are you ready, Matt? Yes. Oh. Jo Joanna, Jed, y Yen Jacek, Yen J okay, Yen Jacek. No wait, Yen Jacek. Polish. She's Polish. I, I just know that she's Polish. But um, Yen Jacek. Yen Jacek. Okay, that would make sense. It's Eastern European. But um, anyway, so yeah, it's at Strawway. I def uh, you know, there's definitely. Uh, there's not a lot of established people there. Like I said, Mag you know, Maganya and Herrig, they're supposed to be veterans, but they're not even, neither of them could really be considered top 10 right now, especially when you look at how Felice got handled by Paige Van Zant in her last outing. I mean, she was handled 
by Paige Van Zandt. Mm -hmm. She wasn't just she didn't just lose, she was handled. Now I don't know if that I have a feeling that she may not have been herself in that fight. It looked like she definitely could have done better. I don't know if she had a bad weight cut, if she had some kind of you know minor injury going into that fight that the doctors didn't catch or that it just wasn't uh, necessary to pull her out of. I don't know if maybe the nerves were getting to her head, which is a little atypical of Flea. She doesn't usually, you know, she's the one doing the talking. But, um, you know, she, you know, she just didn't do that well. She got beat by a girl who's... Uh, <laughs> Theoretically would have been not yeah. not as a, a tough competition right. for her. That, that, you know, the, speaking of which, Paige Van Zandt, you know, that's kind of a funny thing in and of itself. Uh, before she actually started fighting, uh, professionally fighting, she was actually a ring girl. Mm. Yeah, she was she was a ring girl because she couldn't fight. It was, you know, she did ring girl stuff mm -hmm. like when she was 16, 17, but, you know, because it was... But, you know, she wasn't 18, she was an legal adult, so mm -hmm. she couldn't fight. Mm -hmm. So, but, but when she hit 18, she, uh, she, you know, traded the sign for the gloves I, and, just, I, and started going out there. I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware of that at all. That's actually kind of fascinating. Yep, yep. Page that, that's an interesting way to stay around the sport if you have interest in it, but at the time maybe weren't legally allowed to perform, right? I'm assuming that she probably are, already had martial art aspirations well if we're going to go with that you know joe stevenson he was fighting since 16 on indian reservations but at the time his mom signed a waiver his, his you know he got the blessing from his mom um it's incredible i i guess um from the i think van zandt's dad is the more prominent parent in her mm -hmm. um in her life, well, in, her, in her life, and even though he was more op open to it, I guess he just didn't want her fighting before, you know, she, she had the decision to make it herself, so. I don't but, know that anybody wants to see their little girl get their face bashed in, right? Nobody's yeah, in a hurry. Yeah, probably not, probably not. I, 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 I can only imagine what all the fathers are thinking when they go in there, <laughs> they're thinking, you know, oh my gosh, my, you know. <laughs> my it, precious it's, baby it's, girl. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Bart, it's, could you imagine as Bart's dad thinking, oh my gosh, What's stop going on? the fight. What is happening My there right baby now? baby girl is getting massacred <laughs> by this just giant of a woman. Oh, well, actually, well, she's she, tall. She's tall, but she's not, you know, she's not a big Hulk-like cyborg. Did you know, I, I suppose, I heard that cyborg supposedly walks around in the 170s. Walks uh, around at the 170s. No <laughs> wonder she goes in there and smashes every single woman she goes against because she's, she's huge. Nobody's ever denied her being a sturdy woman yeah i actually you know when i went to see her at the when i saw her at the press conference she's taller than me i'm five four <laughs> but you know she's not just taller than me she was more hulking than me and i was just like oh my gosh this woman is just wow so um she was gonna hit you over the head with a club and take her or take you to her cave is what you're saying <laughs> something something, along, something like along that the lines of that but yeah it's um all right back to last night invictus yes L last in, night's in, invicta yeah, invicta so yeah we had um we had just yeah we had just cyborg take out van duen we had tanya take out aldana um you know i'm glad i'm glad tanya evinger finally got a title uh, like Evans, that. And, and Avenger won that, and that was not the atom weight. That was bantam weight. That was bantam weight. Okay. She's she's one of those people who's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. She, I think, I can't remember if she fought Cyborg or not. She definitely fought Gina Carano. Okay. Um, but she's been around for a while. She tried out for the Ultimate Fighter eighteen, didn't get through. Um, and unlike. How am I blind, drawing a blank on her name right now? Um. Un unlike uh, Ultimate Fighter, I'm thinking four. Okay, four horse. Uh, unlike Shayna Baszler, mm -hmm. yeah. Unlike Shayna Baszler, um, you know she didn't get a contract straight into the UFC, which I think was uh, almost a crime in and of itself. But I don't. I'm not the matchmaker. I'm not the talent person. So. So she currently, Baker currently does not have any any sort of uh, working relationship with the UFC. Excuse me. Uh, you said Shelly Baker, is that who you said? Anyway. 
Shayna Baszler. That's who I meant. I Shayna meant Shayna Baszler. Baszler. Who actually trains out on Fullerton with uh, CSW. So Shayna Baszler does not fight in the UFC. She does. She, but she, she just didn't she fought, win. She, she didn't fought, win the fancy contract. No, she did not win. No, she did not win the Ultimate Fire. She mm -hmm. actually lost. Um, interestingly enough, to the winner of the contract in the first round. She Sparza. Lost, no, oh, Pena. Sorry, this we're was thinking then, different way. Yeah, this was okay. Okay, my, my we're thinking different seasons of the show. You're, you're thinking twenty. I'm thinking eighteen. Yes, but yes. yeah. She lost to Juliana Pena in the uh, first round of the show, and that was kind of interesting in and of itself. You know, Ronda Rousey picked uh, Shayna Baszler, and Misha Tate picked Juliana Pena, but, um, and Rousey getting the first pick wanted to make a statement. She re matched up... Um, the, the two, let's say the two top fighters with one another right away. No, no, no. Her idea was to match up the first pick or her opposing team's first pick against the veteran, and theoretically, Baszler should have won. But Juliana Pena is clearly a resourceful woman, and she was able to win the fight. And um, <laughs> I, rem I remember Ronda Rousey took that personally. It's like, you know, you're, you've, you've wronged me by training your fighter to win. It's, it's like, um, this is MMA. <laughs> She's a... Childishly competitive at times. Uh, she, you know, um, that, that, and um, I honestly think, um, being high functioning autistic myself, I honestly think Ronda Rousey may be on the autism spectrum, uh -huh. just because, just because of the fact that um, some descriptions from her birth, she was born with her umbilical cord ripped around, uh, uh -oh. wrapped around her throat. She was blue. Uh oh. Um, I had a similar situation like that. I, where I, I well, I, first of all, I came out of the uterus, I wasn't breathing. Uh -oh. Um, then later on, um, a nurse came to check on me. I wasn't breathing. I was blue. Uh -oh. Um, so, you know, oxygen deprivation. And then also, um, you know, Ronda Rousey talked about how when she was growing up, she grew up with a speech impediment. I would at times, I, I, I talked later and I had several different issues. I was, you know. I was uncoordinated and stuff like that, and you know, I just had all these issues going on growing up, and eventually I found out that it's because I was high functioning autistic. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if Ronda Rousey is the same thing. Not that it matters now, because she, you know, she's on top of the world. So, um, <laughs> but it, you know, it's just one of those. It's just one of those interesting things, right there. You, um, uh, you never do know, but that is a good armchair diagnosis. On yeah, your all reckless speculation, right, and, Matt? Yeah, it's all reckless speculation. Obviously, this, this is this is my, this is me. <laughs> this is me making a guess based on my background and the, the similarities with my background and her background. Though but, I'll say this: your backstory is touching, and you are uncommonly open to the, our audience. I'm sure they'll appreciate knowing that much more about you now, Matt. Well, it's yeah. That's just one of those things. Well, it's I I don't let the disability define me i define me by my actions so, of course yeah so uh, i'm the same way yeah i don't let uh being left-handed mess yeah. me up you know? <laughs> okay um what were we talking about what uh so we're, we're we're wrapping up invicta oh yeah we were wrapping up invicta so yeah uh yeah we're talking about tanya avenger mm -hmm. so tanya avenger yeah, she she tried out, didn't get through the first round of uh, of the Ultimate Fighter 18, and then didn't even get a contract into the UFC, which I think was a shame, considering that she was she'd been on this like she'd been like a, on a three or four fight winning streak before, and she went on and she continued winning like three or four more fights afterwards, including including this this fight last night, or. And, and, and if she's able to string fights together, she's in a division where she's able to compete in the UFC against fighters that are signed to the UFC. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's just a matter of time before she, um, you know, she does eventually get signed to the UFC. I certainly hope so. Cause, Would you say, um, go ahead. Because like I, like I said, she's one of those veterans, been in there for a while. She's, you know, not in the top 10 right now, but she's been in there for a while. I do think she can make a run in the UFC. Um, whether she, uh, earns a title shot against Rousey or not, I don't yeah, know. The only time will tell. Yeah, only time will tell, but we're gonna see how that goes. Uh, Alright, so, uh, moving on to, what do you want to move on to, um, uh, uh tonight's, ton oh, uh, tonight's UFC, right? 
E. So those in those Invicta fights were two nights ago. Yeah, technically they were two nights ago. <laughs> two nights ago. Yes, I, I, that's a my we, bad. We made word. we made a mistake, right? We were yes. just oh gosh, it's all the coffee. Uh, all well, right, so. usually Invicta <laughs> fights are on on Friday night, so yeah, I got a right, and all the days melt together. For Thursday us. is an uncommon day for fights, unless you're Tachi Palace fights. But yeah, uh, so it could anybody would have made that mistake, right? Uh, so, oh, just just one more thing in summation with uh, Invicta Go FC ahead. thirteen. Um, one of the four, what they call themselves, the four horsewomen mm -hmm. of. Uh, who are they? MMA. Go ahead. It, it's, Ronda, it's Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler, Jessamine Duke, and uh, Marina Shafir, who um, has been uh, uh, Ronda's training partner, but she actually hasn't fought in the UFC. She, okay. uh, she fought last night, and uh, she lost. So... I I, uh, <laughs> I don't know I don't know where <laughs> might uh, where, stifle her progress yeah, in the might, meanwhile. Yeah, that might stifle her progress in the meanwhile. But you know, and, and on another note, um, one of the ways in which um, you know for UFC 190, in which Beth Correa was basically na making a name for herself, was by um, beating two of the other th uh, two of the four horsewomen of MMA. She beat. Jessamine Duke, and then she rather decisively beat um, Shayna Baszler, and that's one of those. That was another one of those fights where I was just like, "Stop the fight! You're taking a beating." <laughs> you know, you know, you know. You know. No. Hello. Okay. Uh, sorry. Um. You know, one of a uh, sort of a a running theme in knockouts in women's MMA is that not. A lot of women fighters can generate sort of one punch knockout power, yeah, and as I, a result, you get these really sort of battering finishes. You you, you know you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, I agree with you there one hundred. Where they just sort of take I, the, I uh, the same the, punch you know, over women, and over and women over. Women can kick hard. I know that for mm -hmm. a fact. Um, but I don't. You don't. You still don't as see a many, lot of of. Uh, High like kick knockouts a, from mm -hmm. women, or say a straight right hand or a right hook or a left. Yeah, uh, I'd, left straight or I'd a left say hook. the only woman capable of doing that is even it, it would be Cyborg, and even then you don't see that too often from her. Mm -hmm. um, Beth Correa is capable because she's you know she's it, yeah, but yeah, it doesn't happen that often because women just can't develop that kind of. Uh, Yeah, it, it's typical. It, it's not. It's not as easy for um, yeah, they, sorry, they, girls to. Yeah, they they just can't develop that kind of power. Is the problem, and they as a result, as a result, you really you, you see yeah, it like yeah, you see them result, pressed see, up against the cage, just yeah, hitting their faces these, back, or in. or on or with their back on the mat, and yeah, you just <laughs> see these brutal <laughs> beatdowns. It's just it's just uh, that's just unfortunately how it happens. And and sometimes even even though the, the you know MMA fans that are in the know. Um, uh, oh, and let, uh, go the, ahead. Uh, um, uh, another exception to that I'd have to say would be. Um, Ronda Rousey, because she did, she did, um, knock out Alexis Davis. It was, it was, you know, that was quick. It was that 12 second mm -hmm. knockout where mm -hmm. she did the judo throw and then she, she had him in the head and arm and then she just went, <laughs> and I think on the second or third <laughs> side, she, you know, she took her, took her out. Yes, I, I, so, I remember that. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, it just, it's one of those things where the right. Uh, you know, it has to be the right person. Ronda Rousey, obviously. Um, Cyborg, another one. I can't really think of anyone else off of the bat. I don't even think Gina Carano was capable of that. She's it's, as talented as, as she is or mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. at her prime. She just wasn't capable of developing that kind of power. She did used to land some heavy hits, I remember. But even her, even with her being sort of at the time, for what it was worth, the premier striker for a women's MMA, w didn't exactly generate the sort of power that yeah, made somebody w women just cannot see in men's MMA. yeah women just can't develop that kind of power i mean you they don't at, typically you, they, you, they, you, they might be able to but they don't they don't typically at least we haven't seen yeah it. you the you know even in men's mma you look at the lightest weight class you look at flyweight demetrius johnson he can knock guys out mm -hmm. we, we saw that <laughs> it's, it's been a while but you know we saw that with um benavides yeah with, again benavides he knocked him out that was straight tough. up knocked him out that was, so, that was tough. Yeah, men, men, well, the thing is, it's just another one of those differences. Men just have more muscle. Mm -hmm. Just, just 
plain plain and simple. Men just have more muscle, they have more power behind them. Mm. So they can do that and women just don't have that kind of power on a normal circumstance yeah. unless you're a freak like Rousey or Cyborg. Well, at and, times, yeah, and at times circumstances have to line up, right? You yeah. have you have your when you match up, say R- Rousey's power against uh, s- uh, uh, somebody who can't take as much of a punch, then you're maybe going to see something closer to that. But that yeah, like, uh, that's not always going to happen. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what the state of Alexis Davis' uh, chin is, but yeah, it was just one of those things where it just lined <laughs> it just lined up correctly, and she just you know she just took that shot. What the what the state of uh, what the state of the chin? Uh, is. I don't know if she has a glass chin because <laughs> I, I I I haven't seen her take a huge beat. Well, she didn't take a beating from Sarah Kaufman, so I'd like to say. It just depends, cause you know you you could hit a person on the jaw who normally has an iron chin, and they could just go out like glass. Mm-hmm. It just it just depends on a whole bunch of things, yeah. you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just circumstances and stuff like that. So yeah, um, yeah, that was. So we finally got through Invictus, uh, thirteen in some in summation. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see. Continue about International Fight Week, since a lot of the events that we're talking about are related to the International Fight Week, which is upcoming still. Yes. Starts on t- today being Saturday. It would start. Uh, it's been going on. If you're gonna go by the IMM, uh, the International Mixed Martial Arts Championships, it started Monday. Okay, if you're going, okay. if you're going by the activities actually put on by the UFC, it started on Wednesday. Okay, okay, okay. It's, so it's so, it's been going on at least since Monday. So at least about almost a week now, five yes, days uh, now. Yeah, almost a week. And then you know it'll be have by the time it ends, it will have been a full week if you do include the the. Starting on amateur Monday. MMA championships, yeah, because it's because it started on Monday with amateur MMA, and it's gonna uh, wrap up with the Ultimate Fighter finale, um, American Top Team versus Black Zillions on Sunday. So that's a full week. So um, okay, so yeah, Saturday um, tonight, UFC 189. This is the thing that's been big. It's been talked about for a while. Uh, UFC 189, Conor McGregor versus. Chad Mendes, not the main event that um, people were hoping for, but it's still a big thing because it's got Conor McGregor. So this main event coming on the heels of Jose Aldo, the featherweight, featherweight champion. champion, being injured and having to withdraw from the fight, um, forcing Zufa to, with about a week, two weeks out from the fight, uh, to change the main event uh, from Aldo versus McGregor to now Mendez versus McGregor. Mendez being a featherweight fighter who has uh, one previous loss to Aldo already. One. He has lost to Aldo twice before. The first one was an actual knockout, and it wasn't even a, you know a knockout to the face. It was a, it was a body knockout, if I recall Ooh. correctly. Um, then. Um, then he fought to a three round, uh, a five Aldo five did. round decision. Aldo did. The, yeah, the next fight, um, I I personally th- think that fight went to Mendez. I think he won it three rounds to two, maybe even four rounds to two. But the judges judges did, disagreed with judges me. disagreed with me. Not the only not the only time that that the judges <laughs> have disagreed with me. But um, uh, yeah, that fight. Went the distance and uh, and you know Mendez unfortunately came and that's two two losses in Mendez's career only two losses are to the same guy to the champ yep the champion and it's kind of been a thorn in his side but you know uh, one thing with um, with this fight though even though it's two weeks out typically the team alpha male fighters which Chad Mendez is a team alpha male fighter they stay in shape. Uh, regardless of um... yeah, those those guys are athletes who are always training with one another, and them being sort of one of the uh, premier pre- camps, premier stables almost in mixed martial arts. Uh, they're, they're always training with one another, so it's not as if there's a shortage of elite uh, 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 competition to train with, or at least to spar with. Um, on that team yeah they're always in there they're always in shape regardless of whether they're in for a fight or not and you know you've seen that when those those fighters have stepped up to the plate when someone got injured like um you know when burrell was supposed to go up against dominic cruz cruz dropped out again and um you know Faber stepped up for the rematch he lost but you know he he was able to step in because he'd been in shape and he'd been you know training for 
uh, he he just been training in general, but it, it it's kind of that old school um, you know MMA philosophy when they train they train to fight. Not necessarily get for certain opponents, you know, back when it was against the tournaments and, you know, they, they'd string events together within, you know, maybe a month, maybe a month out. So you'd, it, so you'd be in shape, but you'd have very little time to train for an actual opponent. So, you, you know, you basically keep your basics. So, um... Now, a that, guy like uh, Conor McGregor, Matt, I would go as far as to say that a guy like Conor, Conor McGregor, about half of the work for him to earn a title fight was the yapping that he did am i correct um basically and He's... so now, now now this is going to and the, this has happened before with the ufc where they've been faced to place in a much hyped fighter who has developed a certain amount of buzz around him into uh, uh, about against somebody else unfortunately i don't have the example on the ready but let's say with mcgregor in mcgregor's case specifically mcgregor supposed to fight aldo aldo being the champ He's sort of another fighter with no notoriety in that division that McGregor was able to sort of hype himself up and to sort of uh, uh, rise to his level uh, in terms of notoriety. Now, he's knocked down a peg having to fight Mendez. If McGregor loses, ultimately this is bad for the UFC, correct? Yeah, but it's... They no longer have a bankable star who they're able to... Prom they, they, they will still make the fight eventually. The fight can still create buzz uh, eventually. But it won't have the same luster uh, that it would have had this time around. Uh, because the imagination of... Uh, if McGregor was to lose, the, the imagination of the audience as to what McGregor would be able to do if he got his hands on Aldo m will be altered permanently. Right, because Conor McGregor, you know, uh, we... We haven't seen him go. This is the big criticism. We haven't seen him go, go up against a strong wrestler. Dennis Seaver, stand-up guy. You know the all of his past opponents. You know they, they they were not strong wrestlers. They just were not. You know they they were kind of hand-picked. You know kind of mid-range. You know stand-up fighters. Whereas you know you you know Frankie Edgar, Chad Mendez, maybe even you know, maybe even Ari Faber, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. you know, you know these these guys are strong wrestlers with strong striking backgrounds. We have not seen Conor McGregor's ground game at all because he's never had to use it. So here we are, you know, even against a jiu-jitsu guy who's you know will have a basic stand up and then was going to want to take it to the ground on his back. You know, we haven't even seen seen him against a guy like that. Mm -hmm. So we have no idea what his ground game is like, if at all. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I, I'll tell you this: we're certainly gonna find out tonight because I can't see Mendez not trying to do his best to take that fight. Yeah, but it's just one of those things where you know, being a guy with with kind of a re well-rounded pedigree as he has, he's gonna wanna he's gonna wanna pick his shot. He's not gonna wanna go in there and be like, you know... I'm gonna shoot from minute one and shoot and shoot and shoot. Yeah, he's, he's not gonna wanna turn this into a wrestling match because I'm sure McGregor has... Even even in the time that he has, he, he'd be ready for that. Mm -hmm. So he's he's gonna wanna try and set up his shot and he's gonna, you know, he's gonna wanna actually do some striking and then at the right moment, he's gonna, he's gonna wanna set up his shot. But it has to be at the right moment. Obviously, you know this. This even goes in wrestling. This and then this translates to MMA. You need to set up your shot. You just go in, head down, bowling in there. There's, you know, you're gonna get knocked out. Very pure and simple. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he needs to. He's gonna go in there. He's gonna look f for the opportunity to set up a shot, and then he's gonna, he, you know, he's gonna take that shot, and then he's gonna take it to the ground. And then we're probably gonna see one, two things. We're either gonna see a ground and pound, or we're gonna see a submission. Or Conor McGregor's gonna surprise us, and we're gonna see an, a well-rounded Conor McGregor pull off some kind of submission. <laughs> nah, <laughs> but, uh... but yeah, we have. But yeah, like I said, we haven't really seen any chance of Conor McGregor to prove he's got any kind of a uh, fight game because he's just never uh, uh, any sort of ground game at a wrestling yeah, any game. any kind of a ground game because we have never seen him have to use it because he has not gone up against good quality opponents. Now, in terms of his earlier career, that's not completely his fault because you don't really have good wrestlers in the UK. Just, <coughs> you know, just being blunt. You don't have good wrestlers in Ireland. You don't have good wrestlers in the UK. So you don't get to see that used. So, uh, and, and very quickly, Matt, just as a side note for you and I, we uh, we do contribute to a MMA news site that is based 
uh, in the UK, right? <laughs> Uh, technically, I I contributed. I I the, contributed. Uh, what I'm saying is MMA freak. Isn't that based out of Scotland? Uh, no, no. We have a correspondent uh, based out of Scotland, Tom Heffernan, whose article we will cover later in the show. But um, no, we are not based in the UK. We are based in um. Let's see. Do we, it's we're either based in, technically in Minnesota. Pardon the industry talk. We're either based technically in Minnesota or we're based technically in Las Vegas. It depends on. Uh, how where you want to consider that base? We'll it, say Vegas, right? We'll, we'll say Vegas, yeah, but yeah. We're we're ten, <laughs> yeah. So we're technically based in Vegas. That's where um, Gabriel Keith, uh, the editor in chief, is based. Shout out so, to Gabriel. Keith. Yep, yep. G shout out to Gabriel. Love Keith. you, Gabe. Yep, love you, Gabe. <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, tonight's tonight's fights. Go okay. on. So yeah, with um, another uh, we got another belt on the okay. No wait, sorry, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So just got done talking about Mendez versus McGregor, Matt. Yeah. I need to do this to you, and I'm doing it to myself. This is the first prediction today for tonight's fight. Okay. So, you go first. Go. I am going to predict um, Mendez by uh, ground and pound. Uh, give me a round. Uh, I'd say second or third. I'm not. I can't make a exact prediction there, but I'm going to say the second or third. Ground and pound TKO. Yeah, ground and pound TKO. Um, I will go ahead then uh, and predict Mendez as well. And I will call it a fourth round TKO uh, okay. for my prediction. Okay. So moving on. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Robbie Lawler versus... Um, Another title fight. Roy, yep. Roy McDonald for the uh, welterweight title. This is actually Robbie Lawler versus Roy McDonald too. Because mm -hmm. they actually face each other. They face each other before. And uh, I can't remember if that was for the, for the title shot mm -hmm. or whether that was... Um, for number one contendership, perhaps? I'd like to say it was number one contendership. That actually may have been the fight where Lawler won. And then shortly after that, GSP vacated the title. And uh, Johnny Hendricks, having fought in that close fight, automatically got uh, a shot at the vacant title and Robbie Lawler got the other one. I can't remember if it was that one or not. It was, but, Yes, that fight was right before Johnny Hendricks, but I don't think when they fought it had been established uh, that he would then fight for a title. Right. Yeah. But he did then, I think, the fight immediately afterwards fight for the title. I yes, believe so. Yeah, so. The vacated title. Yeah, so Rob, yeah, Robbie Lawler, Michael McDonald. Uh, no, no, no. Rory McDonald, Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald is the artist. Uh, Ain't no man high uh, The Michael McDonald I was thinking of is the bantamweight fighter who hasn't oh. fought in two years. I, man, why hasn't that guy fought? Michael McDonald. He fought. He, fought, he lost to Raya Faber and then he just has not fought since then. Uh, yeah, I know he had a broken hand, but how long does it take for a broken hand to... You know, this is one of those things where it's like, it's those, those, those injured fighters who are like out for the longest time... You know, you're like thinking, why? We haven't heard if you've been cut. Dave Terrell. So why aren't you fighting? When's Dave Terrell's next fight? You don't remember Dave Terrell? I the soul vaguely, assassin. Vaguely, vaguely. Um, he was on uh, Caesar Gracie's camp, like Nick, D a precursor to Nick Diaz and those. Yeah, I have no idea when. Oh, he he was the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, he knocked right? out Matt Lin. No, I don't know. I don't think so. He Matt, Matt, he he knocked out Matt Linden. or he might have been Ultimate on the Ultimate oh, Fighter. If it old. was like the first season. That, or something that's like that. old. That's old. All right. Um, so continuing with tonight's fights. Uh, yeah. UFC so, one eighty nine, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Co-main event, Robbie Lawler versus Rory McDonald. Um, Rory McDonald uh, is, is a he, teammate did... of GSB. They both mm -hmm. fight out of the TriStar gym. And both Canadian. Yep, both Canadian, though he doesn't have the accent. Um, kind of an interesting... Th uh, uh, he, I don't think he's French-Canadian. I don't think he's from the province of Quebec. Kind of a funny thing there. Um, there was actually this stretch of time where he lost a bet in something. I can't remember what. But he let a friend pick his his walkout music, one of which was was um, Rihanna um, was a Rihanna song, and I was thinking, oh, is this just your music? I, okay. <laughs> but I later found out he lost the bet. It's like that makes perfect well, sense. It, it, Who it, would go out to a Rihanna song other than a girl? <laughs> but um. Well, then again, Ronda Rousey goes out to bad reputation. No, that's technically by girl, too, but... Um, well, either way, you can't be boxed in by stereotypes, right, Matt. Right, right, yeah. So, well, I knew that he wasn't gay, but anyways. 
<laughs> that might have been inappropriate in my recent events, but okay. Well, nobody said anything about that. Good thing you brought it up, though. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> anyways. I'll make sure to include that with the tags. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, so R Rory, um, yeah, he's a teammate of... Coming off of three straight wins. Uh, yeah, and the last, last 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 loss was to Robbie Lawler. To the Robbie Lawler uh, so, in November 2013. And he, yeah, and he came back to three straight wins. When I got, beat, first, beat Maya. Jimmy Maya, Rory, uh, Tyrone Woodley, and Tarek Safadine. In Canada, the last fight against uh, Safadine, yeah, so uh, TKO victory. Yeah, so home field advantage. Oh, he's had a home field advantage for the last two fights. Big Canadian star. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. with a record of 18-2, and two, he's hopping in against Robbie Lawler. Yes, he is. So... Yeah, and um, Lawler won the last fight by by split decision. Yes, it it was a close fight, and you know they, those guys threw down, um, and yeah, they did. It, they it, they it, definitely threw down. A, a sort of boxing kickboxing fight, not not much by way of wrestling or grappling. Well, that that's that's their base. Both of those guys lo love to stand and bang. Mm -hmm. That's just how they fight. Um, you know, Rory McDo uh Robbie Lawler's got kind of that. Uh, you know, wrestling base, but you know he's he loves to he loves to stand and bang, mm -hmm. and that's what he likes to do with. And Rory McDonald likes to stand and bang, so they just you know they just went out there and they just went and let it all hang out. Yeah, they just went went at it for three rounds, and you know Robbie came out on top. I can't remember if that was a fight where um, Rory, you know, it, it looked like Rory could have closed it out, but he he didn't in the third round. Um, I. I think that's the one where Lawler may have clipped him, and then you know that you know one 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 good kit can swing the momentum of a fight. Of course. Yeah. So. Um. Uh, so, Robbie Lawler, this is going to be his first title defense. Yeah, first out, first out defense since he took the. Uh, Won the vacant belt uh, against was it vacant? No, no, I'm no, 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 no. He he won he won the fight against Hendricks. Hendricks was injured. Robbie fought twice before Hendricks um, came back, and he. This is one of those things where, like, this is similar to Matt Sarah, how he got injured, and and then you know he he fought GSP in order to win the belt, but by the time he came back, GSP had earned the title shot again by beating um, Matt Hughes, so he ended up having to fight him GSP immediately. Right yeah, what it wasn't one of those immediate rematches. It was just um, you know GSP was more active in the meantime, and so this is one of those. This was that was one of those situations. Johnny Hendricks was you know had an injury, and Robbie Lawler was just more active in the, in the interim, and then that's how he got the he got the title shot, and then he beat um, he he beat Johnny Hendricks in that split decision one uh, again. That's one of those things where I don't agree. Um, that was a tough one. That that was one of those. That was one of those <laughs> tough ones. I don't think I. I you know, uh, obviously, like I said, um, dis disagreed with the judge's decision before, but unfortunately, I'm not ringside filling out the the scorecard. So. Um, Though we all wish you were, man. Uh, yeah, you know, there was actually a point where I actually worked with CAMO, California Amateur Mixed Martial Arts Organization. Mm -hmm. I, I never did it as a judge, but, you know, it's one of those things where maybe I should think, you know, maybe I should go back and see if I can't do that again. But, if, if a career in podcasting fails. Yeah, if a career in podcasting <laughs> fails or if the, you know, career in writing doesn't pan out, but either way. Um, so, yeah, that's, um, yeah, it was one of those things where it was close, and this time it went Robbie Lawler's way, and, um... Hasn't fought since. Uh, no, he's not fought since. Johnny Hendricks has fought since, but Robbie Lawler has not fought since. I think I, I think he, I think that was another one of those fights where he took a battering and he needed time and off. Needed time off. But, but and but, also uh, something that folks aren't haven't taken into or perhaps don't take into account very much is Robbie Lawler has been around for a good, good long while. Yeah, now. he was out. He was around for a while. He fought GSP. I think when GSP was just coming into the UFC, and then that's the time where. Um, he left, and yeah, he's he's been around for a long time. He's he's a veteran of the sport. Do I remember correctly that his fight with Nick Diaz was actually at one fifty five, not at one seventy? So this was a guy who was actually also significantly smaller when he started as uh, well. No, Is that wrong? You're you're thinking of KJ Nunes? No, 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 no. Nick Diaz. They they did they did fight, yeah, but yeah. it was at, at welterweight. One set, uh, it was at welterweight. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. You know, actually, it may have been, it may have been a catchweight. It was in Strike Force. No, 
Yeah. Incorrect. They fought in the UFC. Nick Diaz knocked out Robbie Lawler in the UFC. Um, I'll, I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up. But, but while I'm pulling it up, uh, go ahead and give us your prediction for tomorrow's Walter Waite uh, title bout. Okay. Um. Oh, boy. This is a close one. I'd like to say Robbie Lawler. I'm going to go with a split decision again. Ooh, a close one tomorrow. I, I do. I do think it has that moment, uh, that potential. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say Robbie Lawler by split decision. Um, this is gonna be sort of, uh, 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 you know, not my favorite uh, uh, prediction in the world. I don't think, but I'm gonna go ahead and go with the Canadian McDonald uh, unanimous decision five rounds. Um, Robbie Lawler, it's like I just mentioned. Yes, by the way, Nick Diaz, UFC one or UFC forty seven. Yeah, I stand corrected. Um, but I don't know what weight that was at. I'll double check. Um, uh, what's weight? So, so there yes, was there yes, was yes, a yes, time yes. though that Nick Diaz was fighting at lightweight, at lightweight. But, it, but it was in the Elite XC. Oh, let's see, the first time he did it was in Pride. Then he did it in the Elite XC, and Elite XC, you, you know, they did they were biased in every single way, and they um. You know they realigned that weight, that the lightweight class to five pounds heavier, so that Nick Diaz could take the, uh, could you know make it down there. He didn't make it down there all the time. There were a few times they missed weight, but um, you know he he fought at lightweight and then he fought KJ Nunes, and that's where you know there was a little bit of controversy involved with um, uh, surrounding that. But um, now by no means at thirty three years old is Robbie Lawler an uh, an old fart or anything. No, he's not. He's not. But old by... in terms of fighting years, or in terms of the amount of damage that he's taken, like and the sorts of fights that he gets into, uh, yeah, yeah, in the sport, he's, that, they're, that they're can... rough and tumble, uh, uh, sort of drag out bouts, right? That take a lot out of, uh, uh, you know, yeah, out of yeah, anybody. those those type of fights. If you if you've lived a career of taking a lot of punishment, those are going to accumulate on you. You can, uh, you know, accumulate a lot more damage. Than a fighter who say you know a fights smart, and, smarter, and more is, defensive, and, maybe and not is, as gung ho. Yeah, and is not and is able to avoid punishment. So um, with McDonald at twenty five being the younger fighter, also the less experienced one. Um, I, that I, I'd sort of say that that's what factors into my decision to pick McDonald would be. They've already fought before, so he's got experience. He's not maybe scared of him. He knows that he could get in there and and maybe last. The first fight was three rounds. This was going to be five, so it yeah, but be a he, different can, he can train. He can train. He, he's know. an athletic young dude. Yeah, he's an athletic young. Guy. And and Robbie Lawler wasn't exactly a model of conditioning when he fought Johnny Hendricks, if I remember correctly. He was he was getting gassed by the time he entered the fourth round. That Both may, of them, but I th that may have been his first five. Uh, that actually may have been his first five rounder, even though even, even in strike force, even in title fights. Well, he never actually fought in a title fight in strike force. So, My memory's failing me. Um. E well, even in Elite XC, I think he finished all of his his, That's what I meant. his fights. But yeah. Well, he well remember he came over to Strike Force and then he he just was losing quite a bit, which is why when he came over to the UFC, he decided to go back down to welterweight because he was at middleweight for the uh, for the longest time. By the way, you're right. The last time he fought more than three rounds was a fight against Frank Trigg, where he won. And that was a while ago. Uh, that was in Honolulu. That was oh, yeah. that, that Icon in brawl. 07. Oh, yeah. Icon. icon Which 4, was yeah. Super Brawl, actually, right? Or, or it, it was. was or, or first, Rumble on the Rock. It was first Super Brawl, and then uh, Super Brawl and Rumble on the Rock were separate promotions. Okay, okay. It was first Super Brawl, then it changed its name to Icon Sport, and then it got bought out by uh, mm. Pro Elite, and then it just discontinued. And I don't. Yeah, it's just one of the things that. And I know I know real regional star has emerged in Hawaii. There's no real regional uh, MMA. BJ Penn. What is his called? What I mean is organization. I guess star organization, MMA organization. Does he have an organization in in uh, in Hawaii? BJ um, Penn. Since BJ Penn himself, I would have to say no. I don't. Um, you know, th things have changed. Hawaii used to be a hotbed of MMA, but um. I don't even remember the last time there was an actual huge fight card there, even though it is regulated. They just, no one just, no one's been over there for a while. Well, up until the mid two thousand, <laughs> up until the mid two thousands, right? You would get the occasional name fighting out there, right? Yeah, or the yeah, occasional yeah. two names fighting in a main event. Yeah, yeah, you get, it's, yeah, because there were there were more than a few promotions out there. Because, like I said, at one point uh, with Hawaii, just things just were not regulated. Uh, you know. 
by aliens. <laughs> I think it's a biker gang we're being invaded <laughs> by, but um, uh, yeah, I, the the thing with um, the the thing was, uh, you know, there were some big promotions in Hawaii. Yeah, there was Super Bowl and then there was Rumble on the Rock, but then um, uh, you know, just things changed and the focus went elsewhere. And um, and the UFC consolidated Zufa consolidated their yeah, power. Yeah, yeah. UFC started to consolidate their power, but and yeah, and, it, um, and yeah. Well, and then another thing was the policy change because there was there was a point where you know you know how mid mid the late. Uh, mid to late 90s there was that whole effort to ban M uh, ban mma stateside there were all these things passed by a remnant of that today is the still enforced um law in new york which again got uh, you mean the, ba the ban on mma yeah which york. again got turned down i seriously can't believe that thing was turned down for i don't even know how many ever many years in a row it's it's like it's common sense why are you gonna they're funny politics. it's a money making <laughs> it's a money making sport it's a money making yeah. sport why don't you do that in you know because in new be york because money that is going into dana white's pocket can be going into somebody else's pocket whoever the yeah, that other interest is is who uh, the, uh, obviously is well uh, actually it isn't even Dana White's it's a group it isn't ahead, even Dana White's pocket it's the uh, it's the Fertitta the Fertitas yeah the the uh, issue, Zufa yeah the issue is the uh, not even Zufa the uh, the station casinos no the, no the, well, well, what I mean their is their primary their, yes, yes, their primary money the station casinos mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. you know the issue the issue there is the culinary union's always been say you know um, campaigning against the Fertitas because they want to, they want to be, they want to get their union station casinos, station casinos done do unions, um, and as a result, they basically made this their crusade <laughs> to stop MMA from getting into uh, New York venues or uh, really yeah, in, specifically into, Madison Square. Yeah, Park. yeah, into New York until they they get into the um until they're able to get their union uh into the station casinos if, if they're not in station casinos then the ufc doesn't get to go into um into new york that's that's basically been their their camp pain but what they don't realize is there's a lot more to mma than the ufc uh well i mean there's 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 Bellator, there's King of the Case, there's all these uh, there's all these promotions who just love to get in there and hold shows and you know not even at Madison Square Garden there's a whole you know it's New York is like every other any city other state in, that's, that's any other state there's there's a whole bunch of venues where you can hold stuff you could you know you're gonna create jobs you're gonna create the setups you're gonna set you know the fighters. All the, you know, all the media, it's just, you're just going to create a whole bunch of jobs and they're just holding back because, you know, on the, because well, of, of what, of the, of the major, the fight with the major promotion. That's, that's the only reason why MMA is not, well, not, the, not the only reason. The other arguments that have consistently been that it's, it's quote unquote barbaric, but if that's the case, why are the other 49 states doing that, but... And how is well, let's not get into that discussion because then you get into a discussion about how is boxing any less savage. A um, guy, uh, I mean, a guy is more, concussed. More people, tends... more people die in boxing each year than die in yeah, MMA. But let's not even do that. I'd like to hope that most people who are gonna bother listening to us probably already know those things. Yeah, but yeah. Anyways, so so again, McDonald Lawler. Five rounds, unanimous decision for me. You got him. Uh, you got Lawler in a split decision. I have McDonald. Yeah, so we are split on that. And we'll let's see. break down the other, the, the 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 at least three the, the three more predictions for the three more or for the three pay per view bouts uh, uh, tonight. Sorry. Let's see. Let's Dennis see. Bermuda's De Jeremy Stephens. And that's I'm, a lightweight bout. That is a featherweight. Featherweight bout. bout. I am gonna go with Stephens on that one. Mm -hmm. I think he just brings more of the. Uh, I, I think he brings more of the uh, more more of the fight that intensity factor. I think that's he's the one who's gonna come over with that. Uh, uh, Steven, uh, I'd, Steven, I'd, I'd, I'd say TKO second round. I'd like to say. And Stevens is sort of the veteran, the veteran between yeah, the he is, two he is the veteran. fighters. He is, oh, the he younger the fighter. Uh, he is the veteran. The, 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 the Gunnar Nelson's the younger fighter. 
I, I think. But well, in terms of fight years, Gunnar Nelson's the the younger, the fresher fighter. But uh, yeah, uh, no, 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 Dennis, no, 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 Dennis no, no. Bermudez. Yeah, Dennis Bermudez yes, is yeah. the younger fighter. He, he uh, uh, the younger uh, fighter. Though Jeremy Stevens has more fights and has been fighting for longer. Yeah. Um, and so, you were right in that he did, what did fight at lightweight at one point. So I will. I'll. I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and, and uh, follow suit with you. I think uh, Stevens takes it, though I, I think he takes it by uh, unanimous decision as well. Okay. Um, Gunnar Nelson, Brandon Thatch. That'll be before the stevens Bermudas fight. That's a welterweight bout. What do you think? I'm going to go with Thatch on that one. Brandon Thatch. Um, Again, I think he just has that it factor. He... Um, I'm still surprised that Benson Henderson was able to beat him, considering the massive size difference. But um, yeah, I do. I do think he's gonna come away with that one. Um, Gunnar Nelson, Icelandic fighter, um, only does have the one loss on his record. How often do you hear an an Icelandic fighter? Not very often, uh, though he did lose his last fight by split decision. Um, I'll go ahead actually and go with Nelson. Um, he's got nine wins by submission and three by knockouts. He's only got one fight that's gone to decision. Um, and the f one fight that he has lost was a tight fought bout. So I'm going to go ahead and go with Nelson uh, in a competitive fight. Uh, and uh, he gets the TKO in the third round. And you want to go ahead and just break down this last one, do a prediction, probably wrap it up? Okay, Brad Pickett, Thomas Almeida. I'm going to go with Pickett. Um, you know, he's coming back up from flyweight. I think he's, again, I think he just has that it factor. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Pickett on this one. So at Bantamweight, the lower in fights, or rather the lower weight divisions you get in fights, the sort of tougher time i have to really have insight and break down uh uh, uh break down uh, uh matchups um i will say this uh really <laughs> doing a quick scan on pickett's record he doesn't seem to be the most promising fighter in the ufc's bantamweight of, division of go note, on of note though he does have a win over um demetrius johnson one of one of a few fighters to have that. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. yes, indeed. Unfortunately, when he went down to flyweight, he couldn't string enough wins together to earn a rematch. But no. well, there you go. Uh, so Almeida, I think, is the obvious choice. Okay. Um, winning a first round submission is my prediction. Um, and, and before we got out of here, I, I know you wanted to mention uh, Tom's Tom Heffernan's article. I didn't know if you wanted to. Uh, Pull that up right now and maybe talk about it for a, sec uh, for a quick minute. Yeah. Um, well, I, or, or, or whatever you had lined up. Yeah. Well, um, actually, before we did that, I wanted to do one brief, uh, you know, want to talk brief, very briefly about the uh, Ultimate Fire finale, which is the... Uh, oh, yes. That's in a week. That's next Saturday or next Friday? That That's actually two days from now. Oh, my mistake. Nope, no, no, that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, it's on it's Sunday. Yeah, it's on Sunday. Tomorrow. All right, yeah. go on. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I, I'm just going to talk about it more in summation than anything else. All right. The, um, sort of a breakdown of the season. Yeah, the breakdown of the season. Um, I think I'm going to talk more about the format than anything else. I think both camps definitely fought well. Um, I do think, though, that uh, Dan Lambert was a little... Um, was a little pokey though in saying that you know they that um the black zillions hire their you know hire their fighters um but um you know basically implying that they're more mercenary than than loyal but um, so sort of we pay you to come fight on our, uh, under uh, uh for our team yeah, but not necessarily zillions. because you guys um, not necessarily because there is a sense of uh, family or a sense of community in their group. Uh, it's more so we want to have uh, we want to gain notoriety. We want to have elite fighters. We'll throw you a little bit of cash if you say that yeah, you're training yeah, with us. That's that's what he outright accuses the black zones of doing, and honestly, I think that's that would just... paint them in a that would paint them in a pretty negative uh, uh, light, don't you think? Yeah, but honestly, I feel like that's just more from his just having a negative. Uh, 
you know, just just having negative feeling towards them because you know they the camp did start as a branch off of them, and Glenn Robinson, you know, was was the main guy who made that possible, and he just. I think he just had a grudge because uh, of that, but it's not. I don't think it's as bad as he's making him out to be. They're not all bad people. They, mm -hmm. you know, they just wanted to have a different camp, so they, you know, split off and had a different camp. But um, in terms of the overall format, I think it actually it was a good season. I do think um, I do think the guys that they picked for the finale, Kamaru Usman and Haider Hassan. I think they didn't make the good good picks. They were the, um, you know, they were both undefeated for the season. And uh, I do also believe that uh, the format has potential. I think the team versus team format, um, you know, the last few... And this was the first time they'd really done that, yes? This, this is the first time that they actually did a camp yes. versus camp format. And, you know, the last time a major competition tried to do that was the IFL. Mm -hmm. And, that you know, we all know how, <laughs> we all know how the IFL turned out. I, I still um, am a fan of the Silverbacks. Yeah, but... That and, was a Militich's team gone. Yeah, I think that was Militich's team too. But um, anyways, so... Um, which actually ended up turning into Milich's fighting system. Yeah, and they just ended, ended up going third, with the names season. after a while. Yeah, they just ended up going <laughs> with those names after a while. So but, silly. Yeah, but anyways, um, I do think it has potential, um, especially if you do the um, if you pick the right camps, because there's uh, multiple times there's multiple camps who are training by each other. And I do think it would kind of take out that rut that the Ultimate Fighter has recently been in. Because, you know, you look at se Season 17, look at Season 18, uh, they were just, the seasons were kind of you know, kind of dull. Because the format's just been getting old as of late. But, um, you know. Well, so, so for me, I think it's a little bit of that reality TV, TV syndrome that you, that you see. Uh, prevail in uh, shows like American Idol or any any sort of show that has some sort of audition requirement process or some sort of uh, weeding out process for um, weaker competition in that uh, say you're uh, you're an up-and-coming uh, MMA fighter at a gym who uh, wants to get on the next season of the ultimate fighter you go and you try out or however vetting process they have and they decide that you're not good enough one season they weed out or are able to sign the best fighters from whatever uh, happens that season. And who's to say that on the next season, now because of the diminished talent pool, you're not good enough. Does that, do you sort of understand each, with each season that passes, the people whom are able to find more success might be a lower quality because they've already weeded out the higher quality fighters in the previous seasons. And that's well, something that might have happened, I think, uh, with the Ultimate Fighter. And well, well, that and honestly, the 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 you know it, the issue the issue also I think was partially you know the the who they would pick for the uh, you know for the coaches. Um, obviously, season seventeen, um, you know, Sonnen, Sonnen is the smack talker, and John Jones was the champion at the time. But um, you know, then you had then season nineteen. You had BJ Penn and you had Frankie Edgar. They fought twice before, and it, you know, it just kind of got Could, a little dull. And you know, again, the couldn't talent, really build up a lot of hype based off of that. Yeah, it was just, it was just one of those things. And then, um, but you know, the reason why they were able to hype up season eighteen and season not at twenty, they had women in it. Mm -hmm. women bring it women women certainly bring it and even with season 18 there's a broader appeal for women's MMA yeah. as well the, the, you know the the occasional woman or a girl will 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 go ahead and let let it linger on um on Fox Sports for a minute or two extra if they see that it's a young lady who's in the octagon fighting or who's in the house causing trouble i think uh, they'll be much quicker to change the channel on just a regular old season of The Ultimate Fighter if it's two knuckleheads just sort of going at each other's throats, for example. Yeah, it was entertaining the first few, at first few seasons, went for a very long time, but then it just, yeah, it kind of started to care. And well, I, now I, we're getting into overall discussions about, like, the saturation of MMA in the sports well, market, in the mainstream and I don't sports think market. That, you know, I don't think the transition from Spike to FX and then to Fox Sports 1 really helped things either. Because you, you, there was just this transition period where it was jumping channels quite a few times. So, yep. um, uh, you know, I, one thing, I don't, I don't know what exactly Dana White's going to do with the uh, with the next season because he just hasn't announced that yet mm -hmm. but I, he's got to 
start doing that relatively soon because he got to he's he's got fi film the season and he's got to go through editing and then it's got to air in the fall. But um, one thing I think they could do with the next season, I don't know if this is what they're planning on doing, but um, so just, Matt, this is Matt Salzer's yes, two cents. Yeah. So what I think they can do with a upcoming season is um you know if they keep the team format is the idea of shifting uh, um instead of uh we go up to the bay area and we do american kickboxing academy versus the scrap pack yeah the, 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 the you know, we have we have prospects from those two camps they're they're close there's a little bit of a rivalry it's not as intense as the Black Zillions and American Top Team, but I think it has potential there. I think I think you can make that work. What you could guarantee is chemistry among teammates, yeah. and and also maybe even a higher quality of fights, because these are camps that presumably would be training all along anyway. Yeah. Um, other suggestions: There's a few fighters in the there's a few camp, quite a few camps in the Southern California area they could possibly do that with. Uh, in the the and that's potential there there's a few, oh, oh. a few camps in vegas so and, or they would fly out you know they'd make an agreement with camps and fly them out to vegas right yeah which is what they did with this last season they, 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 they no no they actually had it based in south in, florida oh that's awesome yeah, I hope. that's that's what they did last year they had they had they had the fighters in the house fighters practice at their own gyms and uh home gym advantage went to the the fight that one and that's that's how they ran it for the season and then of course it was a point and stuff like that, but and I might then, want to and try then, watching. And then also, and then also, the weigh-ins were at the um, the weigh-ins were at the home gyms, um, uh, you know, at at the gym, and that actually played out in one of the. Uh, they thought that was funny business. Uh, no, that actually played out in one of the fights where a fighter missed weight, and then it was the Black Zillions gym. The Black Zillions decided after you know like thirty minutes or something like that. You know, the American top team didn't even ask if they could use the sauna. They just went straight to the sauna. Then the coaches, Tyrone Spong, Michael, I think Michael Johnson, they went they went into the uh, the ATT locker room said, uh, we you didn't ask permission. We don't want you in there. You need to get out. And there was almost a brawl because Nathan Coy was like, we're going to barricade the door shut. And, it, it yeah, they just got – they're just getting a point where Dan Lambert said, you know what, it, it's not worth it. Let's just let's just get out of here. And um, well, I don't think – I think by that time he'd already shed enough weight to actually make it. And but, heated moments like that would only be possible with that sort of format. So I'd understand why you'd think that that's actually yeah, more interesting. Yeah, now, um, person, personally to me, I wouldn't – I – Personally, to me, I'd just let him cut the weight. I'd just go in and say, next time, could you ask permission? I would have let you anyways. I'm still going to let you just just ask permission. Those are all part of the competitive mind games, and they're trying to, you know, get... They're, they're, it's a long con there, right? They know that somewhere down the line, not on reality TV, they're going to probably meet each other, and they're always yeah. going to be rivals. Well, kind of a funny thing there, um, you know, Dan Lambert was saying... If one if one of his guys miss weight, I let I let him cut the weight. <laughs> Whereas Glenn Robinson, you know, he's like, and you know, I don't I don't I don't want you guys in here. But, um, <laughs> you wanted him out. Yeah. So, yeah, that's so yeah, that's that's my two cents on uh, you know just on this last season of the Ultimate Fighter. I think it was a, a bit, success, right? Com yeah, comparatively, it was, it was a success. Yeah, it's I good think, to see I them. think it was a success. I think um, I think we had some good prospects. Um, I think Hyder Hassan definitely has some potential there. Um, and um, Kamaru Usman, obviously, some of the other fighters. Um, and they're getting it out tomorrow, like you said. Uh, yeah, they're getting on tomorrow. Uh, yeah, Hydra is on, and you know they're still doing the the Ultimate Fighter um, uh, contract. So it's uh, it's Hassan versus Usman for that. Um, and yeah, I um, other than that, I think it's um, I think it was it was definitely a good season. Um, I haven't really kept up to date on any of the international versions. Um, as of late, I was going to try and keep up on. Season four was it of Tough Brazil, but I kind of and you know I just I just never gotten into it, and then it, um, even though there it probably would have been a little bit exciting with the controversy with Anderson Silva having to step off the show because he tested positive for roids, but um, I think I'll try and watch um, the Ultimate Fighter Latin America two, 
Um, though I'm not sure how exactly that's going to pan out with Efrain Escudero and Kelvin Gastelum not being in the same weight class. Um, I think I think they could pick the better you know better fighters like pick, you know get Diego Sanchez again somebody. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, or 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 a better one would have been Gil- you know hold off Gilbert Melendez and Eddie Alvarez and just have them coach and then have them <laughs> you yep. know. Fight after that, but you know they wanted to do that for. Um, and I'll say this: those two last names are perfect for the marketing blitz that they're trying to go for. Yeah, Mexico, uh, right? yeah, uh, Gastelum and Escudero. Uh, Escudero. Escudero, he was born out there too, so he's fine. Yeah, but Gastelum. Yeah, no, that doesn't. I think that that, yeah. bar- that barely sounds Hispanic, if yeah, anything. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. But. <laughs> All right, so. Um, uh, uh, tonight's okay. fights, big fights, two title, or no, no, one title bout was scheduled two title bouts. We got the UFC, uh, ultimate fighter bouts tomorrow, the finale. Um, what, what, what do you think? We did a good job, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. You now, talk about Tom's article? now I have Tom's article. Yeah. Okay. So, um, for, so for those of you who do not know, Tom Heffernan, as mentioned earlier in the show is our... Uh, Scotland correspondent. He's actually gotten a few more than a few interviews out there. He actually also writes for um, let's see, Daily Record, uh, DailyRecord.co.uk. That's uh, that's his website. That's his primary business. He writes for us as a uh, kind of a favor. So um, and in in um, thanks Tom. Yeah, thank thanks Tom. Thanks. Yeah, Hef as he's called. We, you know, Sorry, thanks Hef. Yeah. So, um, and uh, he did this uh, in in anticipation for the uh, for UFC Scotland debut. He did um, top ten facts you might not have known about MMA ahead of UFC's twenty fifteen Glasgow show. And this is obviously for more of a a, a British audience who's not really going to know that much about MMA other than you know probably some of the bigger names like Michael Bisping. It was sort of written to be read by the layman to inform himself uh, for the history of the sport, right? Uh, kind of uh, in uh, an attempt to draw people away from the misconception of it as human cockfighting right. or some sort of savagery. Yes. So, um, number one was what is mixed martial arts? Um, MMA is officially the fastest growing sport in the world and it's a combination of various fighting styles such as, and we don't need to get into that. You know, we, we all know that, but um, that's, that's number one. Number two, MMA is not a no holds Barred sport. So specifically what he's referencing common, here. Yeah, common misconception MMA contests have no or very few rules. So specifically what he's referencing there is that the origins of the sports, at least in the U.S. or at least UFC specifically, was that it was no holds barred. It was not necessarily mixed martial arts. No holds barred uh, had a rule, uh, d- didn't have as refined rules as mixed martial arts does today. Yeah. Right? And there was a little bit more funky stuff like headbutts going on back right. then. Number three, the cage, where cage fighting is often used to crit, uh, by critics to tarnish MMA as a sinister brutal sport. However, the cage is actually ensure safety of the fighters. So we're not going to continue that, but um, there's that. Number four, beginnings of MMA. Shuto, based in Japan, is actually the oldest MMA organization on the planet. That is true. It started in 1985. However, the first public-sized MMA match wasn't in the UFC or Shuto. It was in a fight between Hercules O'Brien, a British boxer, and uh, I think it's Huo Yan Jie, a Chinese wushu fighter, which took place in Shanghai in 1909. I, um... Yeah, that that is that is an interesting thing right there. Yeah, there was a, there were a bunch, you know, a reading on the history of MMA uh, around the turn of the century. There actually were actually a slowed of a lot of these little isolated incidents where a fighter would where a wrestler would go up against a boxer, mm-hmm. um, and you know various stuff like that. That persisted all the way into the seventies, if I remember correctly. Muhammad Ali and or, or Muhammad, Muhammad Ali, Muhammad was, Ali right? Antonio Inoki. Yeah. That that was actually a different branch in and of itself. Japanese MMA. It was, but Antonio, that was like a shoot fight. It's, yeah, it, yeah, it was a shoot fight. Uh, you know, Antonio Inoki. You know, he'd been this. He was this pro wrestler. He's still considered a legend in Japan. He'd been this pro wrestler, learned catch wrestling under this guy mm-hmm. named Carl Gotch, and uh, he actually started to go out there because he wasn't just he wasn't just a catch wrestler. He was a, he was also a karate black belt. Mm-hmm. So, and the most high profile fight of those um, shoots that he did was against 
Muhammad Ali, and this wasn't this wasn't uh, a um, this wasn't a pro wrestling bout that was that turned real. This was an actual real. They bout. agreed to terms yes. before the bout. Yes, they, they agreed. They, to, now, um, which it, essentially made it what would be known today as an MMA bout. Right? Yeah, but um, kind of an unfortunate thing. In order to make sure that Ali actually had a chance, there were actually a lot of rules put in there to kind of hinder what. Inoki could do if he if if he could have had his way he would have taken Ali down and he would have ground and pounded mm-hmm. him we know that for a fact mm-hmm. but um they actually made it so that he number one couldn't grapple number two he couldn't high kick <laughs> oh goodness so from the, what the I remember fight, he spent most of his fight on the, his back uh, kicking uh, that Ali's was another knees, yeah? that was another thing that they made that was another rule that they made is that he couldn't um. He couldn't kick unless he had a knee on the ground. So yeah, he spent all this time throwing these kicks from his back, mm-hmm. uh, uh, primarily against um, his knees uh, and, and and thighs. His, his thigh, his uh, Ollie's thigh was black. You you watch the video, Ollie's thigh is black, and at the end they called it a draw. Oh, wow! But uh, you know, you we know by today's today's rules, Ali would have taken or uh, Inoki would have taken him down and and most likely grounded him down. It would not have been nice. Yeah, it would have not have been nice. Um, so, Scott, number five Scottish rules, two of three founders of UFC E have Scottish roots. Campbell McLaurin immigrated to the U.S. from a little town called Cowie when he was seven years old, and Horion Gracie, a descendant of George Gracie, a Scotsman from Dumfries, who immigrated to Brazil in 1826. Yeah, Gracie doesn't exactly sound like a um, Portuguese name. But, uh, okay. Six, UFC weight classes. Current weight classes in the UFC are strawweight, 115, flyweight, 125, bantamweight, etc., etc., etc. A fight between Josh Barnett and Gan McGee at UFC 28 was the first and only super heavyweight fight in the promotion's history. That's when they put in um, weight classes, that not counting all, all of the open weight fights that took place before that. The fight, MMA number seven. A, a MMA fight can be won in a number of different ways. Submission, knockout, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, based, that's for the, the ignorant audience. The fighters, MMA fighters are not mindless barbarians. It takes years of dedication, intense training schedules to be successful, main professional fighters, some of the fittest and most skilled in all of sport. That's number eight, blah, blah, blah. Nine, women's mixed martial arts. MMA is primarily a male-dominated sport. However, women's MMA has been around since the early 2000s. It wasn't until major MMA promotions such as Strikeforce, Belt, or Elite XE invited women to compete that MMA started to gain any real momentum, blah, 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 blah. And then number 10, Ronda Rousey. And it has a picture of <coughs> Ronda. Um, kind of scantily clad, kind of not. Uh, women's band, a champion, Ronda Rousey, RZZ, is a star, despite having spent less than 20 minutes in total inside the octagon. That is true. Uh, most of that was with Misha Tate. The undefeated run Rousey. Okay, let's okay. But yeah, that's um that's Tom well, Heffernan's That was fascinating stuff, Matt. Yes, that that's that's Tom Heffernan's article. It like I said, it was meant for a um <coughs> it was meant for more of an audience that maybe wouldn't be as educated uh with MMA. Do you but, want to point uh, do you want to point listeners in the direction of uh, that article? Where would they find that? Okay, that article is going to be found. The exact link is uh, www.dailyrecord.co.uk slash sports slash other sports slash MMA slash 10 facts you might not know about. Or probably just dailyrecord.co.uk and then search Tom Heffernan. Yeah. His articles will come up. It'll probably be the newest one to come up. Yes. Pro- That's pro- nice pro- stuff, right? Ones. Yep. And again, thanks, Tom, for... Um, Thank you again, Tom. Yep, thanks. So, um, and then that's... Uh, okay, so... We're going to go into kind of our more individual stuff, and uh, for that, um, you want to go first, Edson, or shall I go first? Uh, you go ahead. Okay. So, as um, as the decade writers know, I am known for my top tens, and um, I do a monthly top ten on the top ten fights, and uh, so I do not have this list ironed out, but here's the basic outline of it. So, top ten fights of June 2015. Um, number ten for sure is uh, Kimball Slice versus Ken Shamrock. Now, I know I'm probably going to get a little flack for this, but um, credit where credit is due. For two old guys, 
Um, it actually looked like a pretty decent fight. You know, Ken, Ken actually went in there, actually did some grappling for the first time in, I'd say, 10 years or something like that, because, you know, he just he battered up his knees and ankles, and then he just, you know... He's he came, old. Yeah, he, he came out there, actually did some grappling, but then, to his credit, Kimbo was actually able to <coughs> hang with them and then didn't submit. I mean, that was... Almost a pretty solid... Um, a testament to Kimbo's progress and Ken's age? Uh, yeah, definitely. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, t number 10. Number 9, as of right now, would be Eddie Alvarez versus Gilbert Melendez. The only reason why they didn't get hired is because of Gilbert's unfortunate um, uh, tes of, uh, positive tests for... Um, uh, performance enhancing drugs unfortunately that's not good. um number eight is tisha torres versus angela hill that was a pretty good fight uh angela hill did try but of course tisha had more of the grappling base um as of right now i do not have a number seven other um on the list i've got vincente luque versus nathan coy on the ultimate fighter uh, Fabricio Wadoon versus Cain Velasquez. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that as a comeback for the month or the upset of the month, but it's probably going to be one of those categories. Uh, Henry Cejudo versus Chico Camus. That is also going to be on the list. Uh, Patricio Pitbull versus Daniel Weschel, uh, also on the Kimbo Shamrock card. I'm not sure if that's going to be the come. Uh, no, 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 no. That's probably going to... That's probably actually going to be the comeback of the month because that was a pretty good comeback. Um, Romero versus uh, Machida. Um, that was a tough one that's to a, watch. That's another, yeah, that's another one that's a upset of the month candidate. <coughs> um, so, yeah, that's also up there. Um, I'm also thinking about several different submission of the month's month candidates i'm not sure if uh the ultimate fighter one's gonna be that one or if it's gonna be the comeback but um and then for sure number two is gonna be uh, tiago santos knockout of steve boss that was just one of those gnarly knockouts i've never seen someone seize up like that um <laughs> and then um number one for sure is yair rodriguez decision over charles rosa they that was i believe that was the the fight of the night and i i believe that was well earned so um and you'll have that list that you think will ironed out by the uh by, let's say by uh, let's say tomorrow all right all right yeah. so uh, let's say expect it on monday everyone the uh, list will be probably uh, ready prob by prob sunday night monday yes, yeah sunday night probably um, so that's, uh, that's for me. So, uh, you have a, uh, this day in MMA history. Yes, I have a today in MMA history, uh, will be posted today, uh, by the time everyone is hearing this, it should be, uh, readable. Uh, and that's going to be, uh, July 11, 2009. What happened that day was UFC 100. Um, that was headlined by, uh, heavyweight bout between two champions at the time Brock Lesnar was the UFC heavyweight champion and Frank Mir had won the interim champion after Lesnar was not able to compete for an extended period of time co-main event of that night was uh, another title bout between St. Pierre and George St. Pierre and Thiago Pitbull Alves um, St. Pierre was in really what was an evening that didn't have too much excitement or, uh, by, uh, or I, uh, look look at the, look at the third yeah, yeah, fight yeah, yeah, that yeah. was exciting aside, aside aside from the one uh didn't really have too much excitement uh, but let's uh, let let's talk about said fight uh dan <laughs> anderson versus michael bisbane yeah yeah so the the ultimate fighter coaches fight so giving us the one knockout of the evening was actually uh the fight between the two ultimate fighter coaches uh for um that was the actually ultimate fighter see the ninth season um, the coaches were Dan Henderson, a uh, veteran of the sport, and Michael Bisping, actually alum from The Ultimate Fighter, uh, prevailed the second season, if I remember, third season, if I remember correctly. Um, and and that was the first ever nation versus nation format, that, yes. which which would which would later serve at, for other. Uh, later seasons of such, um, a sort such, of modified uh, ver, uh, uh, team uh, uh, competitions, right? right? 
Right, like, yeah, like, uh, you know, later formats, mostly regional versions, you know, later formats like, um, uh, you know, the Smashes, which I think was Australia versus, was it Australia versus Canada or was it Australia versus UK? But, um, oh no, it was, it was Australia versus UK, and then the next one after that was um, Australia versus Canada, Tough Nations. And uh, then, of course, we had the first season of The Ultimate Fighter, uh, Latin America, whether it was Team Mexico versus Team Latin America. So Now, there will be a nice, clear gif of this knockout. Everybody remembers this knockout. Oh, and yeah, if you yeah. don't remember this knockout, when you see it, it's unforgettable. Yeah, that, 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 yeah that was, it, 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 it was beautiful because you... <laughs> That's the only way I can really describe it. Cause you see, <laughs> I, I love how you mentioned earlier fighters seizing up when getting knocked out. By the way, that was pretty bad. That wasn't seizing up. That was going limp. It was nasty. Cause, yeah, that because you know, Michael. I, well, I love how f this is another example of don't smack talk unless you could back it up. Uh, uh, Michael Bisbing couldn't back it up, and though that was the first time he was knocked out cold. Yeah, that was the first time he was knocked out. And one of his, first, I think, second loss, maybe. Second or third loss. Not, I don't think he had very many losses on his record at the time, either. He, I th I'd like to say it was One his against Rashad. I th I'd like to say it was his second, second loss, right? Yeah, second so loss. the first was against Rashad. They fought when they were undefeated, and then it was that one. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, he shouldn't have been talking that much smack, obviously, but at the time, he wasn't as washed up as he has came across more recently. Yeah. Even though he's actually come off of a victory, right? Yeah. Um, no, at, again, though, that knockout was a thing of beauty. If, it, if, it was beautiful. If I yeah, remember correctly, Henderson is, uh, you know, parallel to the ground when landing the Superman punch to uh, knocked out prone uh, Bisping, right? Just yeah, sort of completely it, landed all well, his weight on him. Yeah, I, that was just one of those things where it was just, like, beautiful. Because, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's funny because afterwards, Dan Henderson specifically said that extra one was to shut him up. Oh, uh, yeah. He, it, there was definitely a lot of bad blood heading into that bout. And I think not, both fighters were very vocal about sort of uh, well, their kind competitiveness of funny, heading into it. It's kind of funny because you remember Dan Henderson is usually not a vocal guy. He usually lets his Bisping words... Took, yeah, Bisping brought it out of him. Yeah. I think he, he, he mentioned on more than one occasion, too, that... Bisping was somebody who sort of got under his skin very easily. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And that, yeah <laughs> it showed. Had, yeah, had, yeah, it showed. And it just, yeah, it was just one of those things of beauty. The two earlier fights that night were uh, a welterweight bout between John Fitch and Paulo Tiago and a middleweight bout between Yoshihiro Akiyama and Alan Belcher. Those which were honestly more forgettable Fitch fights. and Akiyama both uh, walked away victorious uh, decisions. Yeah, but Fitch, that was one of those fights where Fitch was just going in there and taking him down. Akiyama was... Uh, that must have been his first or second fight, I believe, in the yeah, UFC. That I, must have been an early I fight. Can't, I can't remember if he's still under contract. I think he may have gotten let go because he just didn't deliver. And he was a big star in Japan at the time, yeah, so that was actually was... Japan, well, yeah, there was he, some excitement. He, he, go, he went by the nickname Sexyama. Sexyama, yes, I yeah, do remember but, that. Yeah, he was a big star in Japan. He wasn't able to really parlay that into very much in a U.S. Well, MMA yeah, career. That's, that's, you know, there's unfor an unfortunate stigma in that Japanese fighters, you know, they they could be successful in Japan, but then it's a completely different ball game when they come over here to the U.S., you know, for a variety of different reasons. Mm -hmm. And, um, act well, actually, you remember, um, of the four original Pride champions, uh, you know, the... Only one of them were Japanese, and that was... Gomi. Yeah, Takanori Gomi. Mm -hmm. uh, um, who actually... I actually... When I was over there... Uh, for those of you who don't know, I spent eight and a half years while my uh, while my dad was, uh, uh, you know, doing service for our country. But, um, so... And actually, it wasn't even in the military. It was just working for the government. But anyways, so, you know, while we were over there... All, all pertinent to an MMA podcast. Continue, man. Yeah, but anyways, when we were over there... Um... Ja um We'd go. Uh, I actually started wrestling over there, and um, I went to a variety of different gyms and uh, teams. And one of the teams that I went to, I found out when he started making a big pride, was Gomi's gym, <laughs> Kiguchi Dojo. Yeah, so you could have been a star. You could have been a contender. Uh... Maybe not so much. So another fight of note from that evening, uh, the last fight of note from that evening on the preliminary card was actually about between John Jones. Oh, yeah. Uh, he who would be current, very likely the current light heavyweight champion uh, against um, Jake O'Brien, also a wrestler, right? 
Uh, yeah, but he, he was. Yeah, he. I don't think Jake O'Brien really accomplished anything of note. He pulled out uh, that victory by a guillotine choke in an early fight in his career uh, at UFC 100. Fittingly, perhaps, as he would go on to become. Arguably one of the greatest fighters of well, all time, that, even with aside you know, from current issues. That aside from, at this point, I believe, just about the face of the sport. At this, as it's, uh, sorry, aside from uh, Rousey. So, just about the face of male MMA, or or, or the, about the face of Pretty close to what, what the male roster is at, in the UFC, right? He would be, say, the most noticeable or the most recognizable or pretty close to it. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if now because of that court case, but we'll... Uh... I, well, it, it, he would, yeah, he would one, still be, yeah, it, up until, even if it's infamously yeah, so, up until he would still recently, be the most he was, recognizable Yeah, guy. the most recognizable guy on the roster, but yeah, that was, that was one that of those... That might be diminished by his trouble and him not being the champion anymore. Yeah, but yeah, that was, that was one of those, uh, you know, that, that was definitely a historic card, obviously, because, you know, someone you know who would actually be pretty well-known participated in it. And then also, an, another preliminary fight card, you had um, uh, Mark Coleman, Stefan Bonner. Both of, both of whom are uh, UFC Hall of Famers now. And Coleman pulling out the unlikely unanimous decision against That was the probably, I'd like to say that tougher. was probably his last hurrah. I think that was his last That's hurrah. That's what he had in him. He yeah. had a victory against Stefan Bonner in him. Yep. He, he went in there and he delivered. So. So that'll that uh, that that's up on the site right now. If y'all want to read that today in MMA history, UFC one hundred. And and uh, yeah, my a uh, my uh, top ten should be, be up, up by, by tomorrow. tomorrow. Um, I'm actually gonna make that code top ten because I never actually got May's uh, list up, so I need I'm I'm a little behind. All right, my, well, my, apolo my apologies to everybody. I don't do this full time. Uh, you know, nobody's holding it against you. Yeah. So I'll I'll, I'll get those both up. Uh, hopefully by tomorrow night. All righty. What do you think, Matt? Okay. Um, I think it was uh, it was a pretty good. Um, I think this was a pretty good relaunch. Thank you for all of our listeners. And um, if you want to uh, read up anything else, we are at mma-freak.com. Uh, we have a variety of features on the site. We got the um, the podcast will be available. We'll have um, we'll also have some other features. We got. You know the rankings. We've got the various articles. Um, you know, which includes a number of opinion pieces. That's where most of my top tens are. That's also where um, Edson's um, uh, this damn and MMA are available. And um, if you want to follow the site, we're at MMA Freakout on Twitter. Uh, Edson, what's your Twitter handle? At Edson underscore V. Okay. And um, I'm at Matthew Salzer. And uh, let's see, for, uh, I wish I could remember the handles for some of the guys we mentioned. I think, I think Gabriel Keith is, I'd like to say at Gabriel Keith. Um, Tom Heffernan, he's got a little complicated one. I'd like to say it's at Heffy Jr. Doc. And either way, we'll have those on the ready in the next podcast, so yeah. we'll be able to give everybody's information yeah. for sure. So, uh, yeah, thank you for, um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Uh, we will be back hopefully next week. Um, might be the week after, but we'll definitely be up uh, back here within the next few few weeks, if not next week. So thank you for uh, listening. I hope you have a great day, and uh, keep fighting. <laughs>